All right, cool. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Ali, and thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the Edge Gateway, the uh, actual hardware product that we created using Swim's infrastructure. Uh, but before I get into that, I would like to talk to you about who we are and what are we doing here in San Francisco. Uh, we're the innovation affiliate of Turkiye İşbankası, which is colloquially known as İşbank, and they are the oldest bank in Turkish Republic, which is essentially the same age with the Turkish Republic, and which is like about 100 years old now. And since the uh, invention of the computer, they have been doing their own IT stuff uh, in their own premises until the year 2006, at which point they decided to uh, separate their IT department as a separate entity, which would be later named as Softec. And about two and a half years ago, Softec and Ishbank uh, co collaboratively decided that they need to follow up on what's happening in the IT world, what are the latest developments, uh, what's going on essentially, and they decided to create an outpost here in the Silicon Valley uh, in San Francisco, which is MaxiTech. And since we have uh, founded uh, two and a half years ago, we've been working with Ishbank and Softec to improve on their digital transformation and innovation uh, strategies. Uh, about a year ago, we started serving other Ish Group companies. There's like a big uh, glass manufacturing company, there's a large insurance company, uh, there are some medical institutions. And about like six months ago, take a, give or take a month, uh, we started serving external clients as well. And our primary purpose here is to find technology and try that technology and create some sort of a tangible result and relay it to our clients at the end of the day. And throughout our journey, a lot of companies that we have met, uh, one of them is Swim. And well, when we first heard about Swim, we were actually very uh, excited about what can be done with it. But we weren't really able to like identify a real world use case that would be uh, we would be able to take to a bank or some sort of a like financial client at the end of the day so we uh, with the help of the swim team we started playing around uh, in the swim environment so I'm gonna go back now uh, that idea actually gave us uh, more thinking space as like what else can be done like with the uh, non-smart machinery turned into smart machinery at the end of the day. So um, since we're, in, we're from Turkey uh, we started thinking about the Turkish environment like where can we go and we started thinking about production facilities. Uh, because of the production facilities in Turkey there's like plenty of them but they're all very very old so the technology uh, associated with them is very old and they're not really generating any data. Uh, so, uh, so this here is Turkey uh, in the middle of all the scary countries and when we go to the northwest side of Turkey, out, other than the middle of nowhere part, uh, there is this bioenergy uh, power plant that we identified and wait, yeah, there we go. Uh, this bioenergy facility is following the model that was created in Denmark essentially and it's situated right in the middle of several livestock farms and if you're familiar with bioenergy uh, it essentially means getting all that livestock's waste and putting it all the, in these big lakes and lagoons and essentially introducing bacteria into it so the bacteria can digest the waste and create methane gas and then methane gas is burnt to create energy. So this field that you're seeing here is essentially 750,000 uh, square feet if I'm getting my math right. I knew it in metric system but uh, I believe that's about like 13 to 14 football fields. Uh, so it's like a very very large environment and as you can see most of it is still under uh, construction-y uh, kind of thing. And so we got in contact with them and asked about how they're doing what they're doing and they essentially walked us through the thing like the bigger lagoons were uh, collecting the waste and then the gas, uh, the, sorry the bacteria was introduced, gas is created, put into some other like uh, digestion part and at there there was uh, aeration going on to put more oxygen into it so it burns easier and then after the uh, methane gas was burned, the remaining product is actually packed up and sold as fertilizer. Um, so the owner of this facility actually tried to uh, install some like traditional uh, mechanisms to monitor what's going on in the facility, but he found out the prices were like very, very high. The starting price of uh, installing the monitoring machinery was about like hundred and fifty thousand and thousand uh, dollars US. 
and that was just to install it and then it would be the maintenance and then the entire system was dependent on wires so there would be about like uh, for that size facility it was about like 30 miles worth of cabling uh, that is required which just like drove the costs up and up and up and we asked them like okay what is the most crucial part that you need to monitor like for our POC stage or like trial of what we're trying to do here and they actually identified the valves these valves are situated around the pools that collects the waste and well actually the waste goes through them into the lagoon so this valve being operable and monitorable is actually very crucial because if you put too much in there you're going to be destroying the diet and nothing is going to be produced if you put too little in there the bacteria is going to start dying because not enough food uh, so that's also going to be uh, disrupting the production and any sizable disruption is actually going to kill the facility at the end of the day you have to start from scratch if anything goes wrong uh, so we actually started playing around with the if I can, there we go. Uh, this is a standard, very, very standard valve. This uh, air pressure operated and it has a PLC into like connections over there. Uh, so we decided to just like, okay, let's tap into that and create a digital twin of these valves. Uh, but the problem is the valves, as you can see, are situated around there and it's not really the best environment that you want to be operating in. For example, if you, uh, if you guys can see this guy holding a very, very large stick, uh, well, that stick's purpose is to actually fend off the snakes that's actually coming up from there. So it's not really a nice place to go in and like put cables and like do any extended work. So we uh, decided that it actually has to be some sort of a wireless interface to collect the information and process. So, uh, this is the summary of the problem that the owner was facing. The valves are supposed to create a homogeneity uh, in the lagoons and they need to be monitored and operated in real time. And the alternative monitoring systems that they ex uh, actually looked into were very, very expensive and they require cabling, but the facility is enormous, so cabling is not really feasible and just imagine like 30 miles of cables and one of the cables broke. How are you going to find it? How are you going to take it out? How are you going to replace it? It's all creating like layers of different problems. So since there is no actually monitoring going on, uh, the owner was employing 12 people in three shifts to actually go manually next to the valve. Look at, yes, that's open. And now I press the button, it's closed on paper. And then take that paper and put all the values into a spreadsheet, which would later be uh, like reviewed. And uh, there's an additional thing here, the production actually needs to be predicted beforehand because not only the distributors, but the government also wants to know how much you're going to be producing that day. But if you're not really sure how much waste you're putting in there and how much bacteria is in there, you can't really identify how much you're producing. It's essentially just working on guesstimation. Uh, so the bottom line is no real-time data, no dashboard, no control over the valves. So we devised this kind of a solution here, uh, which is essentially putting sensors on all of the valves and uh, those valves would be creating the real-time uh, input, oh, sorry, uh, open-close data. Like, yes, this valve is closed, this, it has been closed since this time, uh, and it will open, well. So uh, there's also, the, since it's PLC operable, uh, the valves already had the uh, control circuit operation uh, part that we can just tap into. and. Uh, allow them to be controlled remotely, opened or closed from a cell phone, essentially. Uh, so we put that edge gateway, uh, our actual product, at the, um, well, a very close location to those valves, which would be listening to the valves over an RF frequency. We also put like a small box next to the valves themselves, which would be creating the RF frequency signals. And edge gateway would be then getting all the information, processing it. If there is an anomaly or there is something wrong going on, it would at least be able to show it at the end of the uh, line at the main server. And the data being processed on the edge gateway actually reduces the amount of data that needs to transfer because the valve is open, it's going to stay open for 12 hours. You don't need to keep pressing that like, yes, it's open, yes, it's open, yes, it's open. Uh, so the edge gateway is processing that and only sending the information when there's a change in the state. And the main server actually is just visualization and logging uh, through, again, SWIM's uh, infrastructure. 
uh, it's essentially showing what's happening in the facility at that time in very, very real time. And the main server is actually uh, pushing all the information that it receives to the cloud, which in turn allows the mobile application to view the data and get as close to real time as possible. At the latest trial we had, we had like a two second delay, actually. So uh, other than that, yeah, the, uh, the main advantage of the uh, edge device that we're putting there is not just, uh, it's not just there for like fun of it. Uh, it's minimizing the reaction time. Like when there's something wrong with the valves, when the valve is stuck, it's open when it's not supposed to. Edge Gateway is capable of understanding there's something wrong going on and then alert the necessary person who's going to be taking care of that. And also, yeah, the delays are minimized. Animal detection has essentially no latency. And the purpose of the main server being separate from the Edge Gateway is the Edge Gateway is uh, running essentially on a Raspberry Pi. It has very low processing power which is fine for like checking out what's happening, but uh, if you want to go any prediction or AI or simulation kind of way, you actually need a little bit more processing power. And that's where the main server is actually coming into play. Uh, so the main server is actually taking the information and keeping a historical log. And uh, we are planning to, it's not there yet, but we're planning to implement an AI uh, on there to tell us if there's something anomalous that's not supposed to happen. So the uh, benefits of this edge gateway that we created, there you can see the uh, very, very professionally created schema. Uh, but the main uh, components is the RF antenna module that's creating the uh, wireless communication, but it's also supporting the regular like Wi-Fi or Ethernet uh, connection modules. The edge brain, uh, which is essentially the microcomputer that we named edge brain, uh, is taking care of all the processing in there and uh, it's basically running the Swim EDX. Uh, the benefits essentially is like with the RF antenna, the RF is actually, uh, can actually go into a very, very large area. So there's no cabling necessary. And if there is any low signal area, you can just like put another transmitter there to just repeat the signal. So it's again, strong enough to actually make it to the destination. Uh, since it has processing power, it, uh, it reduces the amount of data that needs to be transferred. And Again, uh, it's processing at the edge, so real-time anomaly detection and alert mechanisms. Uh, we're planning to implement a redundancy system to the edge uh, brain, so if there's anything going wrong with that actual uh, edge gateway, it will just switch to the other operating system and like, keep going until the problem is fixed. Uh, we designed this gateway to be as plug and play as possible. Right now it's capable of like when you attach a new sensor or a new valve or any new uh, device in the system, it's actually capable of recognizing that and adding it to the systems that it's uh, tracking. Uh, so yeah, that's the auto sensor detection. And this actually came much, much cheaper than we expected. So this RF antenna modules are not that difficult to come by. Wi-Fi and Ethernet are also not that difficult. Raspberry Pi is very small and very cheap. So it's actually bringing the costs very, very much down. When we talk to the owner of the facility, he said that he was extremely happy about the fact that the uh, actual uh, monitoring system uh, is going to be much easier to implement and there's no need for miles and miles of cabling and he can actually control everything from his cell phone. Which is actually what's happening in Denmark, for example, like this uh, bioenergy facility model is used widely in uh, Denmark where several farms just like create pool and some money and create a bioenergy facility. They feed the facility, facility provides energy for them. So he's now actually capable of doing that. And the, the guy in Denmark is just like opening and closing the valves from his cell phone. So we essentially just mimic that. And we've been working on that for the last couple of uh, months and we actually have some results in the point. But the PowerPoint is actually kind of uh, being annoying here and not really showing me the video. So I have to do it the other way. Yeah, this is the first video. Uh, here you can see how the sensors are essentially working. Uh, the valve is very simple, like when there's the metal uh, sheet in there, the sensors are touching it and when it's touching the metal, it's closed. When it's not touching it, it's open. So we mimic that. Uh, that sensors are getting it to the valve sensor part and this is the edge gateway which they're relating the signal to and that is actually connecting all the way to the main server. Uh, the other video that I would like to show is 
here. Uh, this is, yeah, then essentially demonstrating how the product works, but you can see the uh, server actually running the swim uh, interface and getting all the information, like real-time information, and then you can see the actual mobile application there. And finally, and they actually, this is yesterday, uh, they went to the facility and got two of these uh, hooked up. Uh, you can see the boxes like attached to them. The boxes are like industry standard, so they're not, they're weather and environment proof, they're, nothing is getting in there. So they're safe to be placed next to those horrible, horrible areas. Uh, but essentially he's pressing the button and with like about, I think four or five seconds delay here, the, we were able to close off the valve. Uh, the next steps with this is essentially getting this infrastructure into other devices that's running the power plant. And that's not just the valves, but the actual engines that's producing, the burners, the fertilizer production areas. All of this are PLC capable, therefore can be monitored. And we're hoping the edge gateway is going to be helping this kind of small and medium sized establishments to do that in a much, much, much cheaper way than the traditional options. But yeah. That is essentially it on my end. Do you guys have any questions? All right, well, if no other questions, thank you. And well, that's it, thank you. <laughs>